to, uh, talking to Chester about drumming styles, and he did, did a little, he was on his drum kit, did a little demonstration of your drumming style, and his sort of, nat the way he would normally play as a jazz player, with the longer stick and both hands, mm -hmm. he was saying how you, you had a much shorter stick, yeah, and you would hit it really hard, it'd be like, and he had to kind of learn that and adapt to it. Um, wow. How did you, how did you relate to Chester? Tell us about that. In him coming on and playing on your songs live. He came over, and the first day we met him was the first day of rehearsals. <laughs> I mean, I, I often think about what you know, what what would have happened if we didn't like him, or what he didn't like us, you know. And there was a track called More Trouble Every Day. So this is interesting because it was a two drummer set up. And we, there was this great fill uh, in the song where it was saying, Dagadum, 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 And I thought it was just fantastic sound with two drummers. And, um, and so I called him, you know, I never met him, no one ever met him. It's not like we auditioned him, you know. But um, anyway, we put that drum fill in quite a few songs live. <laughs> I said, let's do that. Bit. OK. It was an afterglow. It was in a couple of other songs. Um, it's quite, a, quite a, a thing, though, to introduce, you know, black American yeah. uh, ja jazzy drummer in, into Genesis. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I never thought of him as a jazz drummer, but I mean, of course he was. I mean, his his natural habitat would have been that. Um, but uh, he was able to play very complicated music, you know, because of with Frank Zappa and, and and Weather Report. So I think you know he would definitely be qualified for the job. You know, I mean, he wasn't. They, they were, we weren't going to throw anything at him that he wasn't going to be able to play. Um, I just and I and actually I said to him. You know, this is the this is where I play, but really I'm trying to play like a black drummer. So, you know, I you know I just said, kind of put your take on it, bearing in mind that that I'm trying to bring a bit of funk to this band, you know, somehow, <laughs> and uh, you know, you know it's, it should be pretty easy for you. Um, I mean, I I never I was having you know I I never never worried about whether he was going to be able to do it and I never worried about whether he was going to have trouble with this song or that song. Um, and in fact, because he was so serious, we all were quite worried that he was having a good time. I remember, you know, I mean, he just literally, we used to say, you know, if we said, is that okay? He said, yeah, it's bad. We thought that's what he meant. <laughs> Tony Banks didn't know anything about this vernacular, you know, so he says it's bad, is that good or what? <laughs> so, uh, but we found out that he was having a good time, which was good. And he got, he was very easy to get on with. And, uh... He did his, home, he did his homework, it seems like he would go back to his hotel room and... Yeah. ...learn the songs for hours and hours, like late into the night and turn yeah. up the next morning and... You guys were like, oh, you know, he's got taken yeah. to it very easily. Yeah, he, yeah. So that he, you apparently didn't realise he'd been up till four a.m. sort of <laughs> <laughs> desperately trying to learn this. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, he, he took it all on board. So, what was um, so you you get on stage doing a, 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 the, f the first tour after Bill Bruford? This would be, and uh, I guess you'd already had the experience of Bill playing. On the live, yep. So you kind of, in a way, given over the the Phil Collins sound to Bill, a little bit. Um, with Chester, I mean, were you always kind of thinking, oh no, no, wait a minute, you know, I, I, I play it like that, you know? Was, was it that kind of? Was, well, there's always going to be a, be a bit of that, you know. Um, I mean, you know, I literally there was. We had a few, we've had a few moments, you know, but nothing serious at all. But um, he claims that I've been on his case since 1976, which I kind of <laughs> didn't think I had. But you know, I'm, I'm, 
you know, I report the news when I have to. <laughs> you know, if I have to say, it's great. But you know that bit? I think we, you know, try to, try to nail that bit a bit more like the record or, or whatever, you know. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough coming in and being, being someone that plays drums with a band but then doesn't record with the band, you know, because I'm the other drummer and it's always going to sound different because, you know, it's a translation, you know, different translation. But, um, but what, but what it did and what it did again in 2007, it, it reminded us that that we do some things that nobody does. I mean, no, nobody has two drummers anymore, you know, and it's a, it's a, it's a bit, uh, I mean, for, for families that have grown up with Genesis, mums and dads that now have kids, and even their kids have got kids, you know, it's like, what was it really like, Dad? Well, I'm afraid they don't exist anymore, they're extinct, you know. Oh no! Wait a minute! They're going to do a tour. You should come. You know. So we had a lot of people in the audience who were saying, "Now this is what it should be like. This is what this is music." You know. Um, Listen to this, my son. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so you get that two drum thing, uh, which just is like a machine. And uh, and it's you know no wonder because it, it sounds so different from what is being played now. I mean, it was, you know, probably, you know, other people might have been doing it in the 80s, but there's no one doing it now. So I think that was quite interesting, and that's why the shows, even the critics were good to us, you know, saying whether you like them or not, you've got to, you know, you've got to appreciate, he's still singing great, and, and like the whole the show was quite a spectacle, you know, I mean, it was, and even the, I felt that even the critics, realized that a lot, a lot of this stuff was a soundtrack to their life as well, even if they didn't like to admit it. So, but... Uh, I asked Chester um, what was the kind of thing that stands out for him in all the period, you know, from 76 on, and he said the two-handers, you know, he just, just thought that was total mm. magic, you know. What, what a, it's like, I've got this job and I'm doing this this thing which is just so thrilling to be doing. You know? mm -hmm. he, he loved that. Yeah, yeah. it was good. So you, you and we it. always used to leave our, I mean the drum duet, they used to, you know, when we came down to the dressing room afterwards, the roadies had put down what tonight's timing was because it always got a bit longer, you know, where they put bets on it and see, we've got to break the 10 minute mark tonight. Um, but, um, you know, it was definitely the highlight. I mean, you know, Tony Banks would debate this because <laughs> he, you know, he used to go and have a beer. But it was it was one of the highlights of the show for sure because people love that. You know, I mean, they don't like drum solos, but they like talking about a duet. That's a spectacle. And but but nevertheless, we always used to leave it till the last minute to do it, to work on it, to write it. So we ended up with me and Chester in a hotel room uh, with a little tape recorder and, and he, he would sit on one chair, I would sit on another one and the third one was would be what the chair we played on and we would record it. And this would usually be with, that, with a week to go in rehearsals. Um, and so we'd, we'd just start playing and pretty soon, we, because we'd been playing together for a long time, um, but pretty soon we, you know, I mean, it'd be an unbelievable groove. I mean, the... You'd be hitting, the, hitting the cushions in the hotel. Yeah, yeah, hitting a, a chair, you know, just we, if, depending on what the chair was, you know. I mean, we'd find a chair that was in, in, the, in the room and just put it between us. Uh, there is a, a version of this that made the documentary as an extra. And and that is kind of the unedited version of us doing it in Brussels for the 2007 tour. Uh, but we did it for every tour the same way. And so we would listen back to it and say, that was great, that bit. 
and he'd make make a note of it, was to what you know, so we could remember it. And then that bit's great, you know, and that bit's great, and we just sort of string them together and work out a seamless way. Um, I mean, it's basically right like writing a song, but but you know, with a time, you know, with a, with a time limit or a deadline, because uh, for some reason we always used to leave it to the last minute. But was it always different? Always different, yeah, always a bit different, yeah. I would always have to be different. Um, yeah, you know, it, we, we'd sometimes would get to the same place, you know, which was, um, and it was never a battle, it was always a duet. So uh, we did sometimes, you know, aunt's call and response. I mean, it, over the years, it's probably been a bit of everything, but it was never a battle. And it always led into Los Endos, which was, uh, which was you know, the genesis thing. Where sometimes, you know, on my tour, we did it slightly differently. Same thing, because people liked to hear it. And it was, it was something that was very unique to us, me and Chester. With your, um, your drumming start, why did you choose the shorter stick? Why did you, and, and or sort of, why, were, why the one-handed rather than two-handed? The one hand. Chester's take on it was that you, a lot of it you use one hand instead of two, and so he was kind of adapting and trying to do that. He, hmm. He, he thought, no, I don't know what he means by that. Um, okay. I don't know what he means by that. The one hand thing. Do you mind if I say something? Yeah. yeah. Please do. Yeah. When he was when he was demonstrating it on the kid. He'd be doing this, and he'd go, well, this is what I do, bing, ding, ding, down the toms, and then down to this toms here. So this is what he Phil Collins did. It, it was like he would do this, and then all of those. Oh, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. It was just like one, one arm doing, but exactly the same, doing double the movement, but with, with that arm. Right, OK, does that yeah. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. That's the only, yeah. Um, well, I think it's, that's just a kind of an attitude. Thing. I mean, I, I did it because it seemed simpler to me. You know, if um, I can, I can think of uh, occasions where I, I would do it. I'd, I'd some one of those things I do, and I don't even think anyone notices. But obviously, he did. It's just completely intuitive. It's just, yeah. it's just the way you do it. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. So, what we're we talking about? There's no, the short. The oh yeah, the sticks. Yeah. yeah. Well, no. I, it makes a different. It's harder sound. Is am I right? Well, you know, I mean, I, I, I hit them hard, you know, and uh, you know, it's like I've tried changing my setup. I've tried, you know, because sometimes you think. Um, am I sitting here because I've sat in this position? No one ever changes a stool for 30 years. <laughs> or could I play in a different position? It's better for my back or whatever, you know. But you always end up going back to the way, the way, you know, has been the way you've been playing. So, um, uh, I remember uh, there was Billy Cobham, who was a great drummer um, in the, I guess, late 70s. With the Mahavishnu Orchestra, he was he was unbelievable, and and I tried using his sticks, but they were too long. And I remember cutting them off about an inch from the end, and and eventually uh, Steve Jones, my my kind of who was then my drum roadie and, and now is my production manager, he said. Why don't we get some sticks made, you know, rather than you keep cutting off somebody else's? So uh, we had up, we had sticks made that, that length, and um, I don't even think of them as being short, <laughs> you know. I mean, that's how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? Um, that's just the size I I, I play, you know, and uh, I find I do hit them hard. I think if I, you know, when I sit at Chester's drums sometimes with his sticks, it sounds, you know, it feels like I'm about a foot too high and, ev and everything is out of my reach because, 
you know, the sticks are so long. I mean, I don't know how he does it. It's all a question of what you get used to. And, uh, you know, and my, my son now, my, my 12-year-old, he's playing dad sticks. So... Uh, the right size for him. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Cut. No. You let it out.